Hey, today we're going to take a look at OAuth 2. All right, so right now we're looking at the Okta docs on OAuth. Okta, being an authentication provider, gives a lot of information about how OAuth works. That's very nice of them. So what we can see here, there's different types of application grant types. The first one we're going to look at is this authorization code grant type right here. Right? What this allows us to do is it allows us to bring a user into our site, give them a chance to authenticate with something else like Google, for example, or their GitHub ID, right? And then come back into our site and we can gain information about who they are from their Google or GitHub or whatever different login, right? It doesn't have to be on our site for us to identify them. We let them log in through something else and then we can see who they are based on that login externally. So let's take a look at what that architecture looks like. So this is our overall architecture. So the user enters their browser and initiates a request to this application, right? The target application that they're working in. And they want to, let's say, manage their photos in their Google profile. The user is going to enter this application in their browser. Great. And that application is going to say, well, we need permission in order to access your photos in Google. So it's going to redirect that user to an OAuth server, right? This could be in Google, it could be your LinkedIn profile, it could be anywhere. Anywhere that the application is trying to access resources on your behalf in a different system, right? So here, the user is going to be prompted to grant access, for, first of all, log in, and then grant access to this application. And when they do, this OAuth server will redirect the user back to the application with something called an authorization code, right? That'll be embedded in the query parameters. And this application then is going to exchange that authorization code with the auth server for an access token. This access token proves that this application has access, that's why it's called the access token, to resources that this user owns. So now this application can make API calls to this third party to modify or access resources in this system on the user's behalf, right? So again, if we go back to the Google Photos example, well, this is the photo server. And with the access token that it used to make this request, right? This resource server is going to check with the OAuth server. Hey, does this, is this token valid, right? Is this access token valid? And does this access token properly represent authorization to access these photos? And the authorization, the OAuth server is going to say, yes, it does, right? And so once this resource has been accessed or modified, whatever, this application can reflect that back to the user saying, here, we fetched your photos from Google. We made a post for you on LinkedIn. Whatever the case may be for how this OAuth flow is allowing this application, this OAuth client to act on the user's behalf. The good folks at Okta have put together this OAuth 2 playground where you can try out the authorization code grant without having to implement OAuth 2 for yourself. So let's check it out. All right, the first step we're on the OAuth client right now. That's who we are. We're acting as the OAuth client to build a redirect URL to send the user to so that they can authorize our OAuth client app to access their stuff. All right, so this is going to send the client to this authorization server.com authorize endpoint. And then we're going to ask for the response type of code, that is authorization code. All right, we've got a client ID that represents our OAuth application, right? Our OAuth client. We've got a redirect URI that we're going to ask the OAuth server to send the user back to once they've authorized. The scope indicates what type of permissions we're asking for and the state this is a random string that's generated for csrf prevention right we want the response to include this exact same string so that we know when we get a response it's the response that we asked for all right so 
we have all of our query parameters in place. Let's go ahead and click authorize. Now what this is going to do, it's going to mimic the behavior that we would see if an OAuth client redirected us to an OAuth server, right? Where we would grant access to that client to access our stuff. So I've got some credentials, some login cred credentials over here. And I'm going to pass those in. Great. I'm going to log in and now it's asking me for permission. Do I want to authorize this OAuth client to access my stuff, specifically my photos? I'm going to click approve because that's why we're here and it's going to redirect me back to the client. So now here I am, I'm at the client and the query params attached to this redirect, right? We have our state and that string matches. Great. So we know that that works and we also have the authorization code that we were looking for. That's great. Right? So first thing it's asking, does the state match? Yes, it matches. Moving on. Now we have this authorization code and we can exchange it for an access token. See, we're going to create a post request. Again, we're back on the client, right? This is the OAuth client is going to create a post request for a token. And in the post body, it's going to say we have, or in the query params, it's going to say we, we're looking for a grant type with an authorization code, right? We're going to provide an authorization code, get a token back. We have our client ID. We have our client secret, right? What this indicates is that the client, the OAuth client has to authenticate in order to get that token, right? It has to prove its identity with the OAuth server. Then we have the redirect URI that was provided when we got that access code. And then finally, or when we got that authorization code. And then finally, we have the code itself, the thing we're trying to exchange for a token. So if I click go, that's going to mimic what would happen if I sent that post request. And there it is. This is my response from the OAuth server. I've got a bearer token right here it is here's the value that i would put in that authorization header right bearer and then the access token itself right here are all the scopes that were provided for me exactly what i was looking for and even a refresh token right we'll talk more about what that is in a different video but that's it that's the authorization code grant if you want to try it out for yourself it's oauth.com playground